problematic that a trans woman is using the female locker room. I'm just struggling to know what to even say to this because the thing is with this, it has gone viral in the last sort of few weeks. You might have seen it and... Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Alexis Blake and if you don't know me, hi. I'm a trans woman and I share my life stories and opinions on social media and today we're going to be doing an opinion video as a trans woman has been seen shaving her face, caught on camera, caught on video, caught on picture, in a woman's locker room in the gym. So it's a little bit questionable, this one for me. But we're gonna dig right in. I'm gonna give my opinion as a trans woman myself. I've navigated these experiences or how I navigated these experiences going into the toilet and things like that throughout my transition. And we're just gonna dig right in, so let's go. We'll start by watching a little clip of the woman who saw the trans woman in the bathroom and how the confrontation went down and what was said. Then we'll give our opinion as well. We might even look at some like, news outlets and what they've said. Well, I was offended. I took a picture of him and I asked him, why are you there? You're a man with a penis. Why are you in the women's locker room? And he justified by saying, I'm queer LGB. And I said, you shouldn't be in the women's locker room. Well, I left. Okay, right out the gate. Is it problematic that a trans woman is using the female locker room? I'm just struggling to know what to even say to this because the thing is with this, it has gone viral in the last sort of few weeks. You might have seen it. And again, it's the more negative image that us trans women are receiving for some individuals' poor choices and actions. And that's what is incredibly frustrating. So some trans women, the one I guess who this is about, believes that because law is on their side, they have the right to feel comfortable in any locker room or toilet and that is obviously the law currently in some states and I believe that is the law in the UK where I'm from. Fair enough, you want to feel comfortable but when it puts large amounts of other people in a position where they don't feel comfortable or necessarily, I don't want to say safe, but they, they, they probably are safe, but they might not feel safe. And that is obviously a different thing, but still very valid. So it, it's judging in that moment, do I put my own state of being and being comfortable in front of everyone else's that I might encounter in there? And the answer is no. And I don't understand why. I don't understand why some individuals think that it is okay. I always, I'm going to refer back to like my own like life and how I've done my transition and whatnot. For the first six months of my transition where I knew I was, I've known I was trans for like 12 years before I began my transition. Obviously didn't use the female bathrooms and locker rooms then. And then for the first six months of my actual transition where I was taking hormones and I was starting to go out in public as Alexis, I would still not use the female bathroom because I knew that going in there with stubble and a five o'clock shadow and short hair or anything like that that would make me stand out immensely would make other people feel uncomfortable and that in turn would make me feel uncomfortable and that's what I don't get about this situation. Did this individual not feel uncomfortable in there? How would that be okay with you? So for me for instance I used the male bathroom, started my transition and then a lot of the time I would use the disabled toilet because that was a space where I felt comfortable and I knew it wouldn't be putting anyone else out to be uncomfortable. So I think it's just having moments where you're thinking about not just yourself because it is incredibly selfish and it's misogynistic in itself to think that I deserve to be in here so I will be in here screw what everyone else thinks because that's what it comes across like to me in my opinion. At one of my previous jobs I petitioned and helped get some gender neutral toilet signs on the disabled toilet door so that makes that space not only for disabled people but also for people who maybe are starting the transition they're not sure where to go people who don't conform with either gender so they can use that space as well so it's just thinking about everyone there are alternatives there are ways around this to not make everyone always feel uncomfortable now which bathroom do I use the female one because that's where I feel safe and I go pretty much I think undetected in there now but even when I started to transition more and more into it and the hormones started to work and my hair was growing and I was starting to like present as myself I still didn't pass at all in some ways and I think just showing that you are genuinely trans, people will feel more comfortable, women will feel more comfortable. Whereas if you go into the bathroom looking like this, 
This is the person in question. If you go into the bathroom looking like that, with short hair and you're shaving in the mirror, I don't think anyone would ever consider you to be trans in that moment. It just baffles me. At the start of my transition, I would be at work and I would go into the toilet, the individual cubicles, not like male or female, and I would go and shave during my shift because my stubble would come through because I'm a biological man. I've always said it and I always will say it. it's just, I was born like that. I had male puberty. I got a beard. So in those moments, did I go into the women's bathroom at work and shave my face? No, I didn't. I went into the disabled one, which was also the gender neutral one. I'm almost getting tired of seeing things like this. It just baffles me that this person who did this must know the sort of state of the reputation of trans women at this point. They must know that we're under fire a lot, we get a lot of backlash, and any little bad thing that we do is heavily criticised, and by transphobic people, it's turned and manipulated and made something extremely bad. So if you look at this online, there is a lot of negative sort of content around it, and some transphobic content around it, and it sort of, there's a fine line, isn't there, between calling someone out on their actions and being hateful, in my opinion. But how does that individual not know what they're doing is badly and negatively impacting the community as a whole. Like going in there, obviously they didn't know it was going to go viral, but going in there making people feel uncomfortable, those people are then going to come away from the gym there, they're going to talk to the friends and it's just going to spread and trickle and trickle. And that's how the negative reputation is, is created. But then it doesn't help when things like this go viral online and we all talk about it. Okay, let's watch some more because there is some news reports and the actual woman, Patricia Silva, the woman who was in the locker room, did actually put a video on Facebook when she came out and that's what has gone viral. She says that she's okay with people being trans and transitioning and she respects that, but a biological man shaving in a women's locker room with... Anyway, let's watch more. You'll see. You'll see. I want to watch this little clip that I found online. It is Sky News Australia, which is a bit of a questionable news resource. They do do a lot of hateful content, but this one particular snip, I do, I think I agree with. Let's watch it together. Shaving in the women's locker room, and I'm only talking about above the neck. But can I tell you something? The real people who actually suffer with gender dysphoria, you know, mm. like, think about the trans people from 20 years ago. 100%. Those people would not be caught dead shaving their man beard in a women's locker room. Those guys want you to think they're a woman. They would never, it would be embarrassing for them to see you shave, to, to have you see them shave their man hair. That man in that bathroom at Planet Fitness, this large gym here in the States, was looking for attention. And I would mark money that he's an autogynophile, which means he gets off sexually from dressing in women's clothes and then parading around in them and seeing having women see him in the women's clothing. So, because there's no other explanation for why a man claiming he's actually a woman would be shaving his man whiskers next to a 12 year old girl who was just there trying to get healthy. And I think about it, Paul, you know, back in another life. There we go. <laughs> so I do, I do agree. I do agree. I mean, she's obviously very passionate about it as well. It's, it's a lot of it's common sense. And like she said, Going back years and years and years ago, trans women were so, I think they were so much more inconspicuous. They weren't as visible. They did everything they could to blend in. And that's what I try and do personally. Um, I don't want to stand out for being trans. I want to go out into a shop and not get noticed as a trans woman. That That is the whole point of me transitioning and doing like the hormones and the surgeries. It's for me to blend in and for no one to know, but to, to have the confidence in yourself to be in a women's locker room and to shave your beard it's astounding to me. Like, real people who suffer with gender dysphoria are so insecure, they struggle so much with the things that make them the biological sex that they are. So shaving your face, for instance, receding hairlines that I used to have, no chest, all these different things. So, so much insecurity that I used to shave twice a day so no one knew I had a beard. That's, I hated doing it as well. And I still sometimes have to shave now. Don't get me wrong, I'm getting rid of it. And we've done a lot of laser, but it's still a few little bits there. But I just don't understand how, like, like the reporter said, genuine people with gender dysphoria suffer so much. So to have the confidence to go into a public space, into a very private, intimate public space and shave your beard, it 
astounds me. And the fact that there is a, a little girl in there is also questionable and problematic. So it's also thinking about how they're going to be made to feel by your actions. It's not right. I'm sorry, this this one, it's not right. So I know the law is there to protect everyone, to make everyone feel comfortable, but when the minority is making the majority uncomfortable, that is not okay. It's thinking about other people before yourself. Why do so many people not do that? It's just, sorry, it's mind-boggling to me. I don't know. Anyway, I do want to watch this clip because uh, Patricia Shell. Patricia I can't speak today. I do want to watch another clip. So Patricia Silver, the woman in question, she had her gym membership revoked because she took a picture of the man, at a, the trans woman, sorry, in the locker room. And that breached their policy. She, she is now no longer a member with that gym as well. And she did go on to a new channel and discuss it. And I think it's very respectful how she did it. Kudos to us. Let's watch it and we'll go into a bit more. Went into the gym, getting ready to work out. And as I walk in the gym, there's a man in the mirror and his reflection, my reflection, he was actually shaving his face. And I full face shaving cream and I walked past him and counted to 10 because I wanted to be calm. And as I walked out, I noticed that girl sitting in the corner. She was a young girl. I can't say what her age was, but she was wrapped in a towel and she appeared to be very terrified at this man's in her locker room. And I said to him, hey, and he looked up, I took a picture of him, this one, and I said, I don't want to be vulgar, but I, I said, you know, you're a man with a penis and you're in a woman's locker room and that's not okay. You, you need to leave. And he argued with me, said, I'm LGB, I'm transitioning, and I can stay. And I said, you're making this a very uncomfortable situation. You need to leave. Where is the transition though? And it, it's not about me being hateful on the way someone looks or judging them, because don't get me wrong, throughout my transition, even now, I guess, well, definitely now, I still look at things that I've wore or my makeup or hair or anything to do with like my physical appearance. And I'm like, oh, questionable, especially more so at the start of my transition. Like, I'm not saying that when I decided to transition instantly, I blended in, like, don't, I, I didn't, I definitely didn't. So, so I'm not judging this individual's appearance at all but shaving a beard without literal sign above their head saying I am trans it's okay well is it though no there's no visible signifier to say that this is a trans woman who is transitioning it could just be straight man shaving his face in the locker room. You just never hear stories like this about trans men, do you? I think that's so interesting as well. Is it the narcissism, misogynistic aspect to men? Maybe it is, I don't know. But you'd never ever hear stories about trans men doing these sorts of things ever. So yeah, it's just an interesting thought I had and I wonder why, I actually don't know. Later on in the video, the one where uh, Patricia filmed herself coming out of the gym, she did say that she's okay with LGBT and she's happy that their gender transition and that's the way they're making themselves happy, basically. So kudos to her for saying that. I think she had every right to call that situation out. I really, really do. And I don't want to spread hate or malice or nastiness towards this person, but think about your actions because they don't just affect you. It affects all trans women because when you look at the content online, if you just go on YouTube and just search Patricia Silva um, Planet Fitness, you will see so many videos and a lot of them are geared towards transphobia because they're using this in a plight to turn people against trans women. It genuinely is. And that's just horrifying to see. So call out people for the bad behavior, but do it, in my opinion, is just do it in a way that's not tearing a whole community down. Just that one individual, they need to be held accountable for their actions. It's just very frustrating to see time and time again, these sorts of things constantly come up. Mm. I have a genuine question now. What are your guys' thoughts, obviously, on this? I always love to read them in the comments below. But also, how do we fix this? Because if they revoke the law and trans women can no longer use a female bathroom, like, there is genuine trans people, obviously. Like, if I went into a male bathroom now, I think the men might be like, whoa, get out, this is weird. Like, genuine trans people who are transitioning or have transitioned, who are visibly trans or you can't tell that the trans because they've transitioned. How do we fix this? How do we make it? So like, this is part of the problem as well. No one's doing the solutions in these conversations online. No one's having the conversation of how we can correct it. In my opinion, I think having a gender neutral space where people who ne don't necessarily blend in yet or don't feel comfortable going in. So maybe you've just started your transition and you don't know which one to use. Having a gender neutral space is always nice. Is that something that should be explored or looked at? I don't know. It's just a genuine question. How do we correct this? Because 
because it is a problem. It is a constant debate. And also, if you are wondering, I don't use female locker rooms. I haven't been to the gym in three years. And just going into a locker room, even now where I am in my transition, I'm quite confident in myself now. And that I do think I blend in for the most part in the world. But I still wouldn't want to go into a locker room and get changed because I still have gender dysphoria around my body and I have like body issues like anyone does and also the gym is just a nasty place to me I just I don't know why I just don't like it um but I still haven't been to one so I don't know I just I think it's a very sad sort of thing again because not all like this one individual this one person in the billions in the world has done this one bad thing this then continues to paint the rhetoric that trans women are selfish doing whatever they want to be comfortable and they don't care how other people feel which is not the case because there is I'm sure thousands hundreds of thousands maybe even millions of trans women who wouldn't dare do what this person did we do our best to blend in and it's happened and it's done anyway let me know what you guys think in the comments below I always love to hear it thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the podcast me and my partner Liam in the next video thank you so much have a nice week bye